America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Landry, Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman, Jerry Jones. These are the men behind the Dallas dynasty, a record 25 postseason appearances, five Super Bowl trophies. Dallas, you can celebrate because your Cowboys are world champions again. But Dallas hasn't won a division title since 1998. All right, here we go. All right, let's go. Let's go to work. As the Cowboys' summer camp work. begins, no one is guaranteed a job. Ah, damn it. Get focused in. For the next six weeks, veterans and rookies alike will battle for roster spots. Summer camp is hard. For the Dallas Cowboys, it will be hard knocks. Cowboys life is pretty much just whatever it takes to get it done. Get it sun up to sundown. Can't put it into words what we're gonna go through. It's all day just grinding, trying to make it, make it. There's so much expectation because of the history. History. You're gonna have the pain. The pain's gonna come. Some guys aren't going to make it. There's only going to be 53 at the end. It's a hard luck life playing NFL football, period. For the Dallas Cowboys, the 2002 season began on draft day. The Cowboys targeted the player they wanted, safety Roy Williams of Oklahoma. But they also wanted to acquire more draft picks by trading down in the first round. Jerry Jones would gamble and try to accomplish both. I'll get it. Yeah, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, Carl. Kansas City. Uh, I understand. I understand. Carl, I think we just uh, locked in here. Now, um, are you going to take Roy Williams? Okay. So you won't take Roy Williams. Um, Let's go. With the uh, sixth choice in the 2002 draft, the Dallas Cowboys elected to trade with the Kansas City Chiefs. And Kansas City has selected Ryan Sims, defensive tackle from North Carolina. Knowing that Dallas had a sixth pick, I was, you know, hoping to fit myself in that slot before it even happened. And for them not to come up and uh, call the player that they wanted to draft, and for Kansas City, to run on the stage, I didn't know what was going on. Have we made the pick yet? No. Let's make it. With the uh, eighth choice in the 2002 draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Roy Williams, safety from the University of Oklahoma. Is Roy Williams here? This is him. with me. Roy, this is Jerry Jones. What's up? I see you on TV right now. I just, <laughs> Roy, Roy, I just wanted to hear what it sounds like to talk to another Dallas Cowboy. <laughs> I got you covered on television, too. And by the way, Coach Zimmer wants to talk to you, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Here he is. Well, you know your butt is mine now, right? Yes, sir. All right. Hey. Let's see. All hey. right. Hey, Ro Roy, uh, seriously, we all got real excited, and it was kind of hard for us to get our, our logistics together, but uh, the plane is actually probably on the ground right now there in Oklahoma City, and what we would like to do is get you and members of your family in here, and then we'll get you on back up there right after we have our uh, press conference. It really never hit me that I was riding in the owners, the plane, and Jerry Jones is a powerful man, and I don't look at him like that. I think of him as, you know, just saying a, another father figure, and, you know, he's a, a very special man. He pays our bills. <laughs> Roy Williams is a player that we think can play immediately. Uh, he's an impact player in that he can make big plays. Well, Roy Williams has a chance to be as good as he wants to be. Uh, I was asked the other day about, you know, what has he shown prior to us getting into, into the pads uh, that makes you get excited about him. He's a better cover man than I anticipated. Uh, that combined with his strength of going after people and, and getting to the football gives him a chance to be outstanding. Roy Williams says, you don't do that in my kitchen. <laughs> you look young, though, Mom. You see that girl in a green short? You can wear something like that. Yeah, right. I am a grandmother. <laughs> I don't have a girlfriend, so 
ladies. <laughs> Somebody religious with some Jesus in them. <laughs> you know these girls? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's their names? Natalie and Ty. Okay, I'm about to sit down with these ladies. Can I sit down with you? My name is Santiago. Santiago. Yeah, is that okay? Is that really your name? <laughs> you sure you don't look like Santiago? <laughs> My name is Roy. Roy. Yes. I get more starstruck over like singers and actresses, you know. So if I see like a Shanti or a Beyonce or something like that, oh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be on. <laughs> Being a little girl, I would always watch my brother watch football and I would see the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders on TV. I love being in front of crowds. I love entertaining. And this is where I want to be. It's definitely my passion. Number 18, Laura Becky. Number two, Vandy Jordan. Number 61, Leah Lyons. The day I made it, I drove back home to San Antonio just to get enough clothing and things to help me get through the next week. Let's get your temperature first. You got a beautiful ride. Thank you. All right, good. 97.4. I'm going to take your blood pressure, OK? My daytime job requires me to think patient care, to speak for the patient. And then I have to switch my attitude in the middle of the day and focus on becoming a dancer, an entertainer, a cheerleader. The first time I put on my Dallas Cowboy cheerleader uniform, I would actually say I felt patriotic. To represent America as America's sweethearts, it's, it's a joy. Today I'm taking two actions to put a new emphasis on health and fitness in America. First, I'm appointing the men and women you see behind me to the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Smith needs just 540 yards to become pro football's all-time leading rusher, surpassing the man whose photograph he kept in his high school locker, the late Walter Payton. Last night kind of freaked me out a little bit because I was hanging, we went out to eat and we were hanging out with Emmett for my mom's birthday and I just saw so much of my dad in him and the way that he is as a person. I feel that he truly and honestly just embodies everything that this award is all about. When you get an award and you do certain things in life and people recognize you for what you're doing, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, but when you get something from a person or a family that represents truly what the game means, a person that was dedicated to um, excellence, I'm trying to be strong, uh, <laughs> trying to hold my emotions and all, but I just can't help it. That's how much he meant to me. And that's how much it's going to mean to me when I break it. If there was anyone you'd like to have break Sweetness's record, it would be Emmett Smith. Not because of just his football playing ability, but he is uh, the ultimate professional. Emmett, uh, really, from a leadership standpoint, stepped up at the end of the year last year. Uh, he and I had a number of discussions about the direction of the football team. He sent a letter out to our football team talking about the off-season program and how important it was. You know, it was a very sentimental letter that a lot of the players were really taken by. The letter really was just a letter, hopefully, to serve as an eye-opener to guys and hopefully give them something to think about during the offseason in terms of getting focused and really analyzing last year's season. Because last year, our offense really stunk. In my opinion, we did our defense injustice. That is totally unacceptable. Nobody cares what you did in college. I don't care. I don't think any of the other veterans around here care because I know the Giants really don't care and the Redskins don't care. Everybody at this level want to know what are you going to do to help this team get better today?
After 40 years of training on quiet college campuses, this summer the Cowboys moved their camp to San Antonio. Well, you know, of course, we've uh, been in Austin, Texas for a number of years and then up in Wichita Falls. Wichita Falls was a little bit of a change, smaller town. Uh, going into San Antonio is going to be a, a, a different uh, scenario. It's a great core base of uh, Dallas Cowboy fans. Great media, metropolitan area. It's got a lot of tourism. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think um, the fan base that we have down there is unbelievable. Uh, we're going to you know, have big crowds at practice, and, and I think guys play better when they know people are watching them. You know, we're trying to increase our fan base. You know, Houston's coming in, they're gonna try to steal some of the Texas fans, but we want all of Texas. The closest I can replicate in my mind is that it's gonna be like a bowl game atmosphere. We're in a foreign environment, you're put up in a regular hotel, you're in a major uh, urban area, and, and there are gonna be a lot of your fans there. Well, you just gotta stay focused. You know, there's gonna be a lot of people around, they're gonna want our attention. Come on in, cowboys, cowgirls. A lot of entertainment, music. Come on in, guys. Well, there's the potential for distraction and, and trouble. There's more opportunity for guys to miss curfew. In a place like Wichita Falls, where it's really small and there's nothing to do, you pretty much know when you get done with meetings at night, you're going to go home and you're going to go to bed. You're going to study your playbook. You're going to, you know, do watch a little TV. Whereas in San Antonio, depending on how much time you have, you know, you might go out and grab a bite to eat, grab a beer, something like that. Hopefully we'll keep them tired enough to where they don't uh, partake too much of the city. I heard stories about Wichita Falls last year and how hot it was and how guys passed out and things like that. So I'm very fortunate right now and thankful that uh, we don't have to go through that. I'm looking forward to San Antonio. I think it's going to be to our benefit to have the dome. Bear Bryant is going to roll over in his grave when he sees us going in there for two a days when you're supposed to go to Junction City and supposed to uh, uh, bring out the best and worst in men to put a team on the field, and we do it in air-conditioned comfort. The Cowboys built an outdoor field by covering a parking lot with sod. But most afternoons, they will practice in the dome, where the temperature is a pleasant 72 degrees. My father played for the Dallas Cowboys, and the... Um late 60s and early 70s and went on to play for the New York Giants and as a young boy you know, it was, I was always proud that I could say I had a father that played in the NFL and people thought it was neat and, and I just grew up around football and always wanted to play. It's been something that I've wanted to do since I was four years old. You know I just know I can do it. I've put the practice in and, and I'm confident. I just got to get an opportunity to get on the field and I knew that I would get that opportunity in NFL Europe. Led the league in touchdowns uh, receiving and uh, was third in yards and, and had, had, a, had a solid season. And, and not a guy who was even supposed to be the most highly touted on my football team, just a guy who was in the league and, and felt like I did what I set out to accomplish and that is show people around the NFL that I'm gonna consistently make plays because I'm a football player, not just the guy who plays football. It's gonna be one of those training camp, camp tough situations where we, we might be able to keep five or six receivers, but we might have six or seven that truly have an opportunity to play in the NFL. That's how I think the competition at that position is legitimately going to be. Richmond Flowers isn't the name you hear about making the top six. I'm not a guy who it ever seems like people are just going to be raving about. I really know that, you know, what it is I do is kind of come from the back of the pack. I really like being, you know, playing that role being the underdog, coming from the behind. I mean, my ultimate goal is not to make the practice squad for the Dallas Cowboys or any other team in the NFL. I want to play in this league, and I want to be a good player in this league, not just make a team, and I believe I can. There's a big spider web right there. If we could just get a, something to just knock it down, we'd be in good shape. Where is it? Right, right from that tree, right from that tree down right there. I might have got knocked down. I saw it a minute ago. That's still there. It's right there, right there. We have a party uh, at my house every year, uh, kind of a kickoff party, and it's basically for all of the staff people and coaches that are directly involved in football. You see what I'm doing, don't you? <laughs> Schmoozing. This is Michael. You remember Michael? I certainly do. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Are we, go we going to go swimming? Uh, did you bring your suit? Hey. You're going, aren't you? 
a problem. <laughs> you know, Jerry has a suit with him, but this is kind of a sedate party for him. If it got really cranked up, he'd be in there. He'd, he'd go in there. When we used to have parties with Jimmy, Jimmy would get drunk. And when Jimmy got drunk, it was Everybody Katie bar the door. It would, you'd be walking along, somebody push you right push in the pool. Well, listen, we've got... Uh, Margarita machine, we've got uh, margarita machine. Now we got we just sent for more tequila. They've already cleaned out the margarita machine. We're working on it. Guys uh, seem to be able to to just say what's on their mind at, at that thing. The the grouse is the fastest flying bird in North America. So it's a pheasant, it's a smaller uh, pheasant. It's the fastest? What is? The grouse. The, no. Let's go check it out. Faster than like a dove. But, um, it can't be the fastest. The first thing I want to do is I want to thank you all for being here. You know, it's an opportunity for us to kind of kick off uh, the 2002 season, which we're extremely excited about. I want to especially thank the wives, the wives that support everybody. This is a tough job. If the wives are unhappy, the coaches are unhappy. If the coaches are unhappy, the players are unhappy. So we want to make darn sure that everybody's happy. So we appreciate it very much, the job that you do. Everyone here knows the privilege we have to be a member of the Dallas Cowboys, I believe. Jerry, come on out here. Stand right there just a minute. Just a minute. Hey, just a minute. Put that hand up there and what have you. Standing out here, he looks like a Greek statue. Is this the way we're going to have him in front of Texas State? <laughs> Without ring, without ring right there. Absolutely. I'm Randall Williams, wide receiver number 89 for the Dallas Cowboys. You know, my whole area of the Bronx is called the Soundview area. Oh, okay. And those are the Soundview projects. And it's a huge Hispanic population, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. Actually, where I learned a lot of my Spanish is coming, hanging out with some of my homeboys. Good tal? Bueno. Dame cinco dólares quick pick. Talking to them and their parents, you just catch words here and there, and after a while, they just start to stick. ¿Y cuánto es esta vez? Cinco dólares. 165 million. Ooh. No me digas. Gracias. All right. Bueno, hasta luego. All right, oh, Jerry, I can't guarantee you I'll be in, <laughs> be in San Antonio if I hit this 165 million. <laughs> Life as a kid was tough. You look outside the window here in New York, there's a lot of things going on that kids can get involved in that they don't need. They need to stay away from. My mom was very strict, you know, she just didn't want us to succumb to the streets. My father passed when I was five, so she was a mother and a father. Being a single mom and rearing a kid up in this neighborhood, it was difficult. I had rules and regulations that had to be followed, and I didn't take any nonsense. They had to be disciplined. I did not play. I used to walk back and forth to my junior high school down this area. It's a pretty rough section. You walk through a couple gangs, but back there, Stratford Avenue used to have a pretty big gang. Right up here, Bronx River had a crew. They're called posses. That's actually how I, I believe I got my speed, just running away from those guys. But uh, we thought it was a challenge growing up as kids. We didn't know any better. Have you ever seen those HBO specials, uh, Hookers at the Point? This is uh, coming up on the Hunts Point section of the Bronx right now. So uh, <laughs> late at night, there's a lot of action going on down here. I was nervous. I had fears of him being around women and maybe being gay. So I decided that I would get him involved in every sport there was available. This is Rafael Hernandez Intermediate School 116, where I spent my junior high school years. And, uh, you know, we weren't privileged enough to have a grass field. This is where we would come during our lunch break and play football on this hard, hard ground. This is all we had, this little concrete yard in front of you. And, you know, it was rough house. It was tough. I come home with skinned knees and torn up jeans. But it makes you a tough kid. When I go out on the field now, I'm prepared for anything. Dev Johnson and a young man that we brought in this year from a small school, Sacred Heart University in Connecticut, has not played a lot of football was a basketball player prior to uh, uh, playing two years at, at Sacred Heart. Basketball for me was, was a joy. It's what I wanted to do, it was my passion. It was my love, really, and it still is my love. It takes some time to start to acquire a taste for football. It's so hard. 
first year, you know, I, I did okay. I, I did okay. The second year, once I understood what the game was about, I was like, okay, I know what I need to do. So, following year, worked my ass off in the off season, and just just got determined. And you know, once I got determined, it was just the sky's the limit from there. Devin Johnson is a raw talent for us. Dave Campo is always talking to these guys about, hey, if you're a safety, we got one of those. Darren Woodson's going to be our starting safety. You better be a heck of a special teams player if you're going to be the backup to Darren Woodson. Devin Johnson will have to fit into that category. He'll have to be a, a tremendous special teams player and show us enough at another position so that he can be in the mix somehow. I don't really think about it that much, but when I do, I, I think about it, man. I think I got to beat him out. I got to beat him out. I, I got to go to work today. I think he's got a good work ethic. He is not uh, has not embarrassed himself at all coming in here with with guys from uh, bigger programs. I guess I'm really just trying to show that I can belong and I really want to be here and not just be on the practice squad or just another person. I and mean, I want to be the best cowboy there out there is. I want to be the best wide receiver to ever play for Dallas. And that's my goal. <sighs> The Cowboys have trained at five different locations since Jerry Jones bought the team in 1989. But one thing never changes, and that's the work involved. We want to make sure that they're spaced equally down the wall. If we just place them and then I'll say, yes, that's a good spot, so let's go ahead and put it on the wall. America's team does not travel lightly. Hey, did you like the stars? Most of the Cowboys' young players take the bus to San Antonio, but Richmond Flowers has his own means of transportation. We can only let the gas tank fill up to a certain spot because uh, I've got a cracked gas tank. So if we go any past uh, half full, we just leak gas all the way down the highway. You know, this is, this is my opportunity. This is what I've waited for my entire life. This is what I've dreamed about. This is what I've talked about. Um, this is my opportunity, and, uh, and that's what that's what this training camp is for me. Yeah! Woo! No way! Don't run over, buddy. Don't slide in the That was sweet, though. Well, it looks like we made it here. We made it to San Antonio. Now we just gotta find the hotel. For Leah Lyons and the other Cowboys cheerleaders, preparing for the 2002 season has its own set of demands. And Leah learns that rookies on this team are also prone to mistakes. Oh! Yo, how hard is that to be told my arm goes on five, six, seven, eight, one? Okay, if I had three groups go before me and I got up and did your, my arms wrong, I'd be so embarrassed. Do y'all listen to what we're saying to the other groups? And let me see group one do Baby I'm a Star. Leah, do you know Baby I'm a Star better than we did it before? She'll critique you, whether it's on your kicks. The floor works sloppy. It could be a lot stronger. And you Constructive criticism is good control. from our choreographer. You want to improve because you want to look good in front of the crowds. Some of y'all just kind of barely go there because that, that makes it a little harder for you, so you don't want to put that extra effort into it. Physically, it's hard because you have to eat right. It's, it's hard when you do have time to eat, you, you eat snack, you snack a lot, so you have to eat right in those little times that you do eat. All of the things that I think you need to be successful are developed in training camp. The enthusiasm, the work ethic, the camaraderie, the mental toughness. I don't like training camp, I never liked training camp. I don't know, I don't really know many people who like training. I don't even think coaches like training camp. People will ask me, are, are you looking forward to training camp? And in, in all honesty, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, 
Hey, buddy, that actually says they look forward to what we do in training camp is bizarre. The Cowboys will spend the summer not in the usual college dorm, but in a high-rise downtown hotel. When you get to camp and you check in, it's fun to see the bounce in everybody's step. Those are, those are kind of neat scenarios. Nervous rookies and, and veterans that are trying to keep their jobs. Your credentials and your rookie, you're going to need it in the elevator slider. You can swap. That's the minor league, though. Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> 11 years. Doing this. Where's my room number? Here it is. <laughs> as of right now, we're going to throw being young out the window as far as being an excuse for this organization or for this team or for you. We've always heard and been told that being young and being inexperienced is a disadvantage. We're going to turn this thing into an advantage. It is an advantage to be young in the NFL today. The NFL itself is a lot younger just because of the nature of the game. We don't have a lot of rules. So pay attention to the ones we have and we will have no problem. Bed check, be in your room. Stay out of hotel bars. You got nothing to do in the hotel bars. Nothing but get in trouble. I don't want to find anybody. But a couple of veterans came to me and said, we need a couple of parties, get somebody. Personal phone or beeper going off at an organized meeting, 500 bucks. Unexcused late reporting for athletic trainer appointments, $952. Unexcused missing a team meeting, that's bigger than most checks, $4,766. You're working for nothing that week. Curfew violations, 952 minimum. You got half an hour, then you start 952 every additional minute. Maximum fine, $4,766. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk a little bit about why we're here. I believe that this team is ready to take the next step. We are not the Dallas Cowboy teams from the 1970s. We're not the Dallas Cowboys teams from the 1990s. We're us. We're us. We're the 2002 Dallas Cowboys. We should have our eyes forward on the bullseye. <laughs> of the first practice, the city of San Antonio welcomes the Cowboys with a pep rally. And more than 20,000 screaming fans rock the Alamo Dome.
Hey, Sam. Sam, I need to see you. Mr. Jones wants to see you. Mr. Jones? Yeah. Is this not the good one? <laughs> yeah. Hey, Sam. Come Let's on. Let's go. In. Yeah. Good. We have a 91. Uh, limit today on our roster and um, we have five quarterbacks right now yes sir uh, we're gonna have to cut back there there's no question you definitely have the potential to uh, play and be a player in our minds we didn't know uh, if we were gonna get all the draft picks signed okay. well as it turned out we got them all signed so we knew we were gonna be long mm -hmm. by a couple of spots um, so we're going to have to uh, make a, a wave you right now off the roster. Okay. Thank you. You just made my day. For Dave Campo, the long wait is over. A new season is underway. We ready to go? There's guys go. that have been told for about six you months, you know, you've got six months to make this football team. Now you've got three months to make this football team. Now you've got one month to make this football team. And all of that was said without putting the pads on. Here we go now. Got some football going today now. Got some football going today. Got the pads on. So when that first time you put those pads on, uh, there's an excitement there because there's a lot of people been saying, I'm gonna show these guys, the personnel people and the coaches, that I belong here with the Dallas Cowboys. It's time to get serious, no more bull You show what you're made of and what kind of football player you are. This is not a vacation in the Marriott. This is a damn training camp. So we're gonna hit, that's why we got the pads on, we're gonna play football because we're gonna be the toughest damn football team that we can be. You gotta be a big damn tough to play in this league. And that means we're gonna practice our ass off, so get ready for it. Take a look up in the stands. That's what the Dallas Cowboys are all about, right there. We start something special today. This is our day. Let's make sure we get started right. Pay attention to the little things. Let's have a good, sharp practice, and let's make sure we make some progress today. Every day, when you punch that clock, what happens? You get better, we get better. Let's have it right here. Let's go. Let's go. Work on three. Here we go. One, two, three. Work. Work. It's got to work. It's got to work. Let's go. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm ready today. I wish I was playing. <laughs> I just took a run and it hurt. 24, to go. <laughs> the first steps of a new season are typically awkward, as old friends and new faces try to put things together. Me another, another back. Hi, Bruce Coswell. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good to have you Go back. Hamburg. Son. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now flip, come on, let's go, ba my bad, my bad. In the huddle, in the huddle, please, I got him. Hey, new guy, hey, new guy. Hey, how many plays did you screw up when you first got here? You said Jamar didn't even know where the damn facility was. <laughs> hey, uh, Wes, uh, 81 and 84, please. 81 is in the restroom. Okay, 87's in then. Come on, man, let's go. Don't come in through the back, you, you set, okay. It's common sense, get your ass down. Shut up, okay, these rookies. When the ball's on the hashes, we got like 14 yards. Oh, oh. How, how do you Man. count that? What's the alignment on on hitch, 384 hitch? Number plus two? So it's almost like, not to sound like a mathematician, but it's almost like you're subtracting you yeah. know, on the hashes. Yeah. You get in there, they're not going to get in the huddle. You better know. know it. You better know it. I know. You better know it. 
I don't care when I say sub, go in there, you better know. No exception to the last push. Let's go, you gotta get it across there now. Come on. With so much to think about and so many people watching, young receivers like Deverin Johnson, number 13, and Richmond Flowers, number 19, forget how to do the most basic on, thing of all. Catch the football. Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas. We got too many balls hidden right here. It's a 16 wheel. Frustration turns to aggression. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Oh, that's the rookie. All right, let's go. Wasting our time there. Break him up. Come on, break him up. I don't break him up anymore, man. I'm too old. The board. Cut it out. Pay attention to every damn thing that's going on. No more conversations outside of what we're doing on the football field. For a young team like the Cowboys, the practice field serves as a classroom, and the coaches function as teachers. Long on knowledge, short on patience. That ain't what we're going to do no more. You're going to get in the huddle, or you're not going to get in the huddle. You ain't going to get in there if you don't know it. Simple as that. Your livelihood is on the line, and it's up to you. Get your ass to your rooms and study. If you don't do that, that's on you. You're looking at me like you don't know what you're doing. Oh, blow the whistle. We got no damn whistle out here. Side five left. Double team the damn man. Do it again. How difficult is that? The quickest way to get somebody's ass cut is to get on the quarterback in a drill. Stay off the quarterback. For the coaches, the headache of a ragged practice is compounded by the noise inside the Alamo Dome. We need to tell Roddy to go on the other end. It's too loud down here. We got to get Roddy to move. Do we have to have this yelling going on? I can't even, I can't coach. Just trying to listen to us to see if it, how much it's interfering with their ability to communicate out here with Bruce. I can't stand this music out here. I'm trying to talk to you guys and it's crazy. Roosevelt, go over and tell them that's just a little loud. Just tell them that music is just, just, just loud. Tell them, either, tell them get it down another notch or let's kind of take a break on it. I'm gonna have a headache from this, you know, it's loud in here every night. The sound thing? Yeah. And uh, I, I like that sound right there, I like yeah. that level. That's good. Gives a little pitch, gives a little something here, a little pitch. Right. We've had it too loud several times, but they're toying with it like that. Same thing with that loud guy. Yeah, that I, like it. I like we're, it. When, we're when toning we, him down, too. Yeah, I like it when we uh, break or something like that. You then you rub it up a little bit, but even that. But we're, that's what they're doing is toying with this thing to, so it doesn't get us in a field. Five, five, five. Hutchinson, the former baseball pitcher, still can't distinguish between throwing a fastball and throwing a ball too fast. Like this, and, you, and the feet take you through your progression. You went just like this and jump all the way to the flat. Yeah. Oh yeah, I missed him. Move your feet, and there he is. Okay. Yeah, no, I missed him. I missed him. Slow everything down. You're, you're, are you excited or what? Yeah, I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, no, this is exciting for me. First time with pads on in a while. Okay, we got eagle. And out for play, sent off, and we'll finish the finish! Yeah! You got him right here on the edge, right? No, go. Don't stay in there. Hey. Keep pushing. You ain't pushing the car. You ain't pushing no, the car. No, no. Right? Go back to him, finish it off. Let's get it. Beat him this time. Go! Go! Let's go! Good, 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 good. 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 That group acting like they knew how to play football a little bit. Here we go. 96 slam stick. Jumps right under. Got him over the top. Well, I could throw it against air. <laughs> nice throw. You got some air in there. I like it. Hey, Quincy. How much way to throw the ball? Everybody up, right here. Right here. We can get hey, ugly. Let's go. All right, hey. Hey, let's go. I call you up, let's go. Damn. That was a good damn effort today. There were some good things done today. We got a lot of work to do. But I have confidence, I believe, that we will get the work done. The question is, is everybody here going to work hard enough that you believe that we're going to get the work done to be a football team? We got 44 days 
before we open up against the Texans. 44 days to get ready. Let's make sure we all have that mentality. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold up, guys. I'll get, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get After practice, like the fans get to meet and greet their heroes. It's a tough life, let me tell you. It's a tough life. The losing records of the past two seasons seem like a distant memory. There is a growing sense of optimism around the 2002 Cowboys, and everyone seems to feel it.